give us a uh, brief reason why you want to run. Great. I'm going to do my introduction. My name is Kathy R. Weaver, and I decided to run as a write-in candidate because I am committed to keeping the students in MCPS safe, engaged, and on the road to success. When I taught at Madison County High School, I never once said to a student, before I answer your question, what political party do you identify with? When you write in Kathy R. Weaver for school board, you are getting first-hand experience upholding policies, advocating for policy changes on your behalf in the proper method, and 23 years of public school experience. I am married to Madison native Dennis Weaver, who in addition to having proudly served his country as a Marine, is a former educator and current local farmer. I stopped teaching band and choir at MCHS to homeschool our youngest child. The day will come when our child will want to return to his classmates. I want to be a part of supporting the schools as they continue working on behalf of every single student. Making decisions for children is so important. My older children used to always want ice cream late at night and I would say no, so they would run ask dad. He said yes, great, until the stomach aches came. Mom and dad got together and said no more late night ice cream. They knew we had their best interest at heart because we didn't want them to have stomach aches. We weren't against ice cream. We didn't stage a protest. We didn't go on Facebook and rant and rave about ice cream. We just advocated for the judicious use of ice cream. The same united front should be happening with all the adults concerned about education. I didn't always agree with every rule in my children's classrooms, so I would go to the teacher and calmly talk to them. We didn't argue, but rather, we pulled together for the success of the child. I promised to put care and energy into my position as a Madison County School Board member, and that's why I'm asking that you write in Kathy R. Weaver for School Board. Thank you. Okay, Kathy, schools make up the majority of the county's budget. How would you ensure that the school system spends its money appropriately? The, rest, the people who are answering these questions could not read from prepared statements. They had to answer off the top because they didn't have a pre screen. So I'm afraid you're going to put your notebook away and be subject to the timing that they put into it. Yes, ma'am. She's being nice to me. I appreciate it. Okay. Schools make up the majority of our county's budget. How would you ensure that the school system spends its money appropriately? So I think that I um, support so far the uh, practices of Superintendent Anna Graham to streamline uh, for efficiency. I learned just this evening during the Board of Supervisors portion of the forum that she just got a grant for about $600,000. And the question is, as we go to streamline, um, we do want to make sure that the schools are funded uh, for success, that we can meet all the goals of all the programs. And what I bring uh, with me to the table, hopefully at the school board meetings, is my experience balancing uh, booster budgets and school budgets, doing fundraisers, and working for grants as well. Do you have any do you have children or are they enrolled in the Madison County public school system? I have three children. Uh, two are grown and out of the house and they went through public school all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade. I also have a younger son and I finished out the spring of 2020 uh, teaching on the, the lockdown uh, because of COVID and also keeping him at home of course. And I finished that school year and I didn't return the next year. Uh, my husband and I decided that in order for our son to get the support that he needed, we thought it would be best to homeschool him. I was very fortunate that my uh, family could support me in that endeavor. And I know that as he gets older, he's going to want to return to his classmates. And I want to make sure that Madison County Schools are a place that he can go back to and continue to the tradition of his family, his granddad, his grandma, his mom and dad have both taught in the schools, and I think that it's important that he experience public school again. What level of education do you have and do you think that qualifies you to be on the school board? So I went to school to uh, be a music educator. I always wanted to be a band director. 
I have a bachelor's degree in music education from the University of North Texas. I've done graduate de degree work at the Berklee College of Music. I'm also licensed to teach in Texas, lifetime certificate, and right here in Virginia. What that in gives me is years of experience in the classroom and staying current uh, with teaching methods. The important thing though is the experience I have in the classroom. There were so many, many uh, trips and events that we went on um, because I was a teacher in the classroom. I always took parents with me and that gave me a lot of first-hand experience dealing with parents' concerns right at the moment. So my education has allowed me to communicate with parents. Have you read the duties and responsibilities of a school board member? If so, which do you consider the most important? I have read some of them, and I think that taking the oath to uphold the laws that pertain to education is very important. That being said, it's also important that when we see laws that affect our students negatively, we need to also advocate through the proper channels to get those laws changed so that our children's needs continue to be met. And I think it's really important that we listen to our parents and their concerns and advocate for change at the state level and sometimes the federal if needed uh, to make sure that the laws are in effect that are best for our students. We want our children to be safe and feel safe at school. How do you propose the school board can help ensure safety in the school? So it is important and students, the Virginia Commonwealth, uh, the Department of Education has said that the students all have equal access to a free and safe public education. As a school board member, it is important to understand that the teachers that are in their classrooms every day um, must provide a fair and equitable education to everyone that comes through the door. Students feel safe when they are engaged and learning and have the structure and support needed to complete whether, whether it's just one day's assignment or a long-term assignment. They feel safe and happy when they're accomplishing things in the classroom. And I believe that supporting teachers in all their endeavors is the right path for them to be safe and successful. As a school board member, are you prepared to support all students regardless of race, gender, sexuality, disability, or English as a second language learner, or gender identity? Yes, having been in the classroom for 23 years, I have come across students of all different beliefs, of all different sexual orientations, of different learning styles, and my goal was always to unite the students for their common goal of a performance or passing off a scale. We were there for knowledge, and my job as a teacher was to impart knowledge so that as they grew up, they could be successful. My eyes were always on success, and I believe all teachers, whoever, whatever students are in front of them, they are there to teach, they are there to educate, they are to, there to make sure everybody's safe and is treated fairly so that we can learn and they can be successful. What is your stance on culturally responsive teaching? So culturally responsive teaching is not the same as critical race theory. Critical race theory is taught at the, the college level. Madison County Schools do not teach critical race theory. I will say, I'm studying history uh, Virginia studies right along with my son this year and the perspectives have changed quite a bit from way back when uh, when I took seventh grade Texas history so it has been really enjoyable for me to learn these updated perspectives um, even more important it, uh, whenever we can learn different perspectives we grow and we have empathy for different people's points of views and that is very important 
and that is one of the things that can make young adults really feel safe and connected to the people around them. And it's one of the things that makes America great, that we can have all these different perspectives and still get along. What is equity education? So to me, equity education is making sure that every student in front of me has the tools that they need to successfully learn. Now that could be different for different students. Sometimes a student might need a copy of music blown up to a larger size. Some students need to sit in the front of the classroom to stay engaged. And to me, just because another student doesn't need to sit in the front of the classroom, as long as they're still learning, it is an equitable classroom. You now have time for your closing mm -hmm. remarks. First of all, I want to say thank you, Mr. Jackson, uh, for allowing me to get my comments on record, just like the other candidates. I decided to run as a write-in a little bit late, and uh, being able to have this opportunity tonight to express myself is very important. I have 23 years of experience in every classroom age from pre-kindergarten to 12th grade. That allows me to be able to understand how the school works, communicate with teachers and administrators, and as a parent of two public school children, and as a parent homeschooling right now, I can really have empathy and see both sides of parent concerns, and I, it would be my honor to serve as your representative on the school board. Please go on your ballot, shade in one of the squares underneath the other candidates, and write Kathy R. Weaver, and I'd really appreciate your vote for school board. Thank you.